Hello VR creators! Today I'm going to show you an integral program that I use in all of my setups, whether that's for live streaming or recording, and that's OVR Advanced Settings. Now some of you may have heard of this, or more likely you're probably already using it, but if you're not, let me show you why you need it. Hey, I'm Adam Bombadi, and I create tutorials on how to increase your VR live streaming and recording experiences. Uh, I also do the occasional VR game review as well. So I've talked about OVR advanced settings a couple times in the past. One with how to set up push to talk in VR and the other kind of an older video on how to be able to rotate your play space on the fly so it looks like you're moving to be able to save time later editing in post. I'll still lightly go over these sections in the video but if you want more details on them go ahead and check those videos out. OVR Advanced Settings is free on Steam, and yes, this only runs through the Steam VR dashboard, so you need a PC VR, or if you're using a Quest 2, you need to be able to run Steam VR through something like Virtual Desktop. Once it's installed in the Steam VR dashboard, you should see a new little cog to click on. I'm going to be going over these, by the way, as quickly as possible because you don't have time to be watching a 10 minute plus long video. So on the first main page we see here, it shows you some specs and allows you to set profiles for video and chaperone, which I'll go in more detail in a bit. The first page is also important because it's here that you can set your microphone to push to talk. Although don't forget to also go into the bindings to actually set a push to talk button. You can also adjust the volume of your microphone and mute or unmute if you wish. It's set to whatever default microphone you have on your computer, although you can change this in the audio page as well. In the Steam VR tab, the most important features are going to be the Disable Notifications option, which disables pop-ups from happening on your computer that may interrupt your VR experience, and the Camera options, which uses the camera on your headset, so if you get too close to your boundaries, it will automatically turn on your camera. Supposedly, you can have a small version of your camera view attached to your wrist, or with Camera for Room View, if you double-click the System button, you'll get a shadow view of your room. Anyway, that's how it's supposed to work in theory, but I couldn't get it working, but I mess with my settings all the time, so who knows. The Chaperone tab allows you to customize your boundaries or hide them completely. You can change how visible they are, fade distance and height. You can also choose to see or hide a center marker, play space marker, keep the Chaperone boundaries always on, or just completely hide it. You can also create a profile for these settings in case you want them for a specific game, person, or space in your house. Proximity warning settings allows you to further customize a Chaperone in the sense that instead of visual warnings, you can set audio or controller haptic warnings when you get too close to your boundaries. If you'd like, you can also force it to open the dashboard, thereby pausing your game if you get too close. The offsets page I use pretty much for every recording and live streaming session because my recording or streaming direction is different than when I'm just in VR for fun. Without having to remake a whole new play space in Steam VR, I can just rotate in the direction that's front so I can always make sure I'm facing the camera. You can also change directions like height, which can be useful in games like VR Chat because some avatar's feet don't quite match the ground quite right. You can also adjust front or back or left and right to get yourself perfectly on those footprints in your rhythm and dance games to make sure you stay in the exact spot you need to for mixed reality recordings. You can also save profiles, so for example I have one for streaming or recording and I also have one for just when I'm casually in VR. The motion tab allows you to shift drag your play space on the fly with key bindings by holding and moving whatever specific button you set it to. You can also adjust gravity or the ability to throw yourself into the air or ground in a way that simulates gravity and momentum. If you get the hang of it, you can actually do some pretty creative things with this page. A lot of the options on the rotation page have to do with automatic turns based on your chaperone. For example, auto turn automatically rotates your play space when you get near a wall by rotating the direction you're looking at to be inside your play space. Some of these settings can give the impression that your play space is bigger than it actually is, but I'll be completely honest in that I haven't messed too much with this page. Space Turn allows you to rotate your play space through key bindings. I have more details on how that works and how to set it up in this video. There's also a Snap Turn option in which you can set a button on your controller to turn to specific angles. So if you're playing an older VR game or one that is limited in its turning abilities, you can set a binding to create your own to an angle that's most comfortable for you. Space Fix can be a lifesaver. If you've messed with the settings too much, or maybe you're in a game or VR chat and your height just isn't quite right, you can set a controller on the floor to be able to reset it or to recenter your play space back to you if you've spun out one too many times. The audio page is where you can set your output and your microphone, as well as enable push to talk or push to mute. Don't forget to set a binding for this. Show notification in HMD or your headset can be useful in tandem with push to talk, 
so that you get a microphone icon in your headset that indicates that push to talk is in fact activated. Proximity sensor mutes or unmutes your microphone, so what this does is it uses your headset's proximity sensor to automatically mute your mic when you take off your headset and unmutes when you put your headset back on. I haven't tested this personally to know how well it works, but it is an interesting feature. Video settings allows you to make some brightness and color adjustments if you need to, but know that these settings only affect your headset view and not what's actually recorded. You can also adjust super sampling values, motion smoothing, and advanced SS filtering, but be careful with these settings as they can affect performance. The utilities page has some useful options on it, such as keyboard utilities, so if whatever app you're using does not support a VR keyboard but requires key keystrokes on your actual keyboard for some reason, you can use this feature to send emulated keystrokes. You've also got an alarm clock in case you need to set a timer for something, and media control keys which support most common media players. I've tested this out with at least Spotify, but I'm sure it might work with others as well. The statistics page, as implied, shows you various stats from your current sessions, rotations, as well as for troubleshooting, you can see the number of presented and dropped frames, number of times the current app has timed out, and more. Again, if you rotate it out one too many times and you need to untangle your cable, you can use the HMD rotations to determine the direction you need to go back in order to set yourself free. The bindings tab is really fun and you can find some great customization options here. It allows you to set some extra bindings not accessible from Steam itself. Like I mentioned before, it's here you can set a button for push to talk, play space rotation, media controls, and just so much more. Just remember to go into whatever game you plan on using your new bindings with and either disable or replace them so there's no conflict. The settings page is where you can check to make sure OVR advanced setting auto starts or not, but you can also enable some more advanced features that should only really be used if you know what you're doing. Some of the more notable experimental features are the Force Steam VR Chaperone, which you can use on third-party headset to use Steam VR's Chaperone as if it was the native headset. The Disable Oculus API setting might help for those of you with Oculus headsets having trouble getting certain chat, games, or third-party programs to show up in your headset, as it disables the Oculus API that prevents games with both Steam VR and Oculus API to only run as Steam VR. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can do and control with OVR Advanced Settings. You can find me on pretty much any other socials, and thank you so much to my patrons for believing that I actually have something useful to say. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one.